Excellent. Okay. So, again, sorry for the delay. I'm going to go quickly through this as uh, best I can, and then we'll just open it up for some live Q&A um, for the, the end of it. Um, my name is Derek Fry. I'm with uh, FX Groundworks, and we do um, harmonic trading. Harmonic trading is nothing more than a very systematic methodology uh, that allows you to uh, ultimately be consistent in your trading. Um, does consistency mean you only pick winners? Of course not. Does consistency mean you know the future? Of course not. Um, but does consistency pretty much mean uh, getting to where you want to go? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I, for me, at least, um, consistency is pretty much the, the only real holy grail of trading. Um, and this is uh, the methodology that allowed at least me and many others to actually uh, achieve that seemingly almost unattainable goal of consistency. So um, I'm going to go through this, like I said, quickly. It's We're going to just use one pattern here as an example. Um, anybody who knows anything about harmonic patterns knows there's many, many of them. Uh, but there's also, uh, you don't need to use all of them by any stretch of the imagination. There's many people who only ever use just one simple pattern um, and one specific setup within that pattern for that matter. So. Um, it's, uh, we'll talk about that as well. Okay. So the original harmonic pattern that was discovered back in the, uh, the mid-1930s uh, by H.L. Gartley was called, uh, named after him ultimately, called the Gartley pattern. Um, it was a simple uh, one-third, two-third retracement pattern. It was not using Fibonacci numbers and all that, the uh, fancier math that we use nowadays um, in its original discovery. Uh, the Fibonacci was added later by, well, it's arguable, but um, Larry Pezzavento is largely credited with uh, adding the Fibonacci ratios to the Gartley patterns, and then Scott Carney and a number of other people, for that matter, um, have been credited for the most part with finding or identifying um, many of the most common harmonic patterns that we all use. Um, so this is just the most basic uh, of, bear, uh, of Gartley patterns that we're showing here is a bearish one. I'm going to use next slide. We're going to actually use the bat pattern as the example. Um, really, all a harmonic pattern is is a specific set of retracement, uh, extension and retracement patterns that you're all probably familiar with on just a regular basis. The idea of combining these ratios into a specific pattern is probably new to many people, and that's ultimately what harmonic patterns are. It's just a combination of many different, uh, very specific Fibonacci retracement and extension ratios in succession, one right after another, um, to form these patterns that all have these funny names, um, like the bat, the butterfly, and things like that. But um, So the most basic thing here is you start with an X point, and the X point is, basic, in, in a, the case of a bullish one, at least, it's going to be your most recent, your most recent low um, that you have. If, in the case of a bearish, it's going to be your most recent high, in the in the past. Uh, or you, excuse me, not recent, most significant, uh, the one that's most obvious on the chart. That anybody, you know, without any in training at all, could look and say, hey, there's the low. Um, so that would be your X point, and then of course from there the market's going to rally up to an A point, whatever that is. Um, and then that distance from X to A basically becomes the measure by which everything else is measured from. So X to A creates the first rally in a bullish pattern, and then you have, at the end of any rally, you'll have some sort of a pullback along the way, even if it is going to continue on. Um, you know, way beyond this A point, it's still going to have some sort of a pullback along the way. We know that the markets rarely, if ever, move completely parabolic. And even inside of a parabolic move, you can see pullbacks along the way, even if they're micro. Um, anyway, so you have a pullback. That pullback, in the case of a bat pattern, is going to be something between a 0 0.382 and a 0 0.50 retracement of the previous leg. So in other words, if the distance from X to A equals 1, the distance from here to here would be 38 or say one dollar the distance from x a to a, a b this is actually the b pattern here or b point here uh would be anything from 38 cents to 50 cents pretty pretty simple just a normal anything up to a normal 50 percent fibonacci retracement that i'm sure most of you are familiar with 
Um, then after that retracement stops, and it almost inevitably always does, you will get another bounce and a retest of that previous a uh, that previous high. In this case, that so here again, if we then take the distance from A to B, and a, and now we call that one dollar, then the retracement from B to C could be anything from thirty-eight cents to eighty-eight cents. As you can see, there's even more range here in the retracement from B to C than there is in the retracement from A to B. Um, so anything just short of a basically a double top, and then it would fail to push through the previous high, as you can see, and then you would inevitably see another pullback resume, the secondary pullback. Um, Elliott Wave people, of course, would be familiar with, this would start to look familiar in terms of wave counts. Um, and then uh, if we assume the distance from B to C is $1, then the distance from C to D could be anything from $1.60 to $2.60 roughly. So in other words, the retracement from B to C, from, excuse me, from C to D would be significantly more than what we've seen thus far in these other retracements. And then the second key measure would be that whatever the, whatever the retracement is here, whether it's a 1.6 to, to anything out to a 2.6, it still needs to fall somewhere close to a 0.88 retracement of the original X to A. A, whoops, the original X to A rally. So I'm going to go through these with a real chart here so it makes a little bit more sense. So here's just what the standard basic chart would look like. Um, this happens to be the do uh, dollar Canadian and it happens to be a 60 minute chart, but it works on any market in any time frame. Okay, so here's, like I said, here's that original X point to A. And then you can see here when you lay your Fibonacci retracement tool on it, it can extend, in this case, it extended a little bit beyond 0.50. Always want to build a little bit of variance in. Obviously, there's no such thing as perfection. I think anybody who's traded for more than 15 minutes has divorced themselves from the idea of perfection. Um, so, you can see the, uh, here on the next slide, here we go. Then you would use the next, that, fir that first retracement as the next measure. And here you can see this retracement did carry us back to a, I believe it's a 7-8 retrace. And then, of course, here's the extension from C to D, almost coming all the way back down to a uh, secondary retest, almost a one-to-one -one retest, but just falling short. Again, that 0.886 being pretty key. And these are just all the different fib, whoops, all the different fib ratios along the way. You can see how messy the charts can get when you're trying to do all this manually. That's, of course, why we have it all coded into the software to do all of that kind of automatically for us. And that's really the beauty of Groundworks as well, is having all that stuff pumped out in real time and not having to sit here and search through all these charts. This is an interesting study. This is an ongoing study, and it's actually updated on the website. Um, and it is basically going through in um, real time and looking at every pattern that FX Groundworks gets from every market and every time frame and looking at which ones fail and which ones um, succeed and then, you know, exactly what ratios. And then it also is looking at, um, most importantly, how the structure ratings uh, work within Groundworks, which is something unique to, to Groundworks. Um, and I'm just seeing these questions here. Debissa, you're asking about failed patterns here. You can see uh, total failed percentages uh, of different patterns. 
and you can see it's pretty low, obviously. It's obviously much higher without structure. This, this column is without, this column is with, but so for most people you would want to look at without because they wouldn't have, unless they're members of Groundworks, the structure rankings. But you can see here that it's basically a, in, on average it is going to offer at least a 70% edge. Um, and of course there are rules that go into exactly how this works, but oh, next one, 50. Why is 50 a FIB number? That's a very good question and there's all kinds of mathematical arguments against and for it. Um, I agree with you, obviously. It's not a Fibonacci number. Um, there's no argument there. But uh, the fact that it's used as a common Fibonacci ratio, um, you know, frankly, the herd uses it so much because they believe it's true, it becomes true. I mean, it's it's a self prophecy, frankly, in my in my opinion. But other people are going to argue other things. There's other pure mathematical arguments, but I would argue it's pretty much the herd affecting itself. Um, so let me move over to the website itself. Let me get rid out of this PowerPoint here. There we go. Um, and we can just go through some current patterns and see what's coming up. Is there a time frame that offers the best performance of harmonic patterns? What we have found through that study, and that study is up to 1.7, last I knew at least, 1.7 million patterns. Um, the short answer is no. There's really no massive variance in, in outcome uh, depending on time frame. The difference is in this, uh, except in this. Um, remember, when you're running those studies, it's assuming you're taking every trade. How realistic is it for you to trade five minutes and really take every trade? First of all, you're going to miss all the ones that you're asleep. Maybe those are all the ones that are the winners. I mean, obviously, probably not, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to, your outcome is going to be affected by the picking and choosing that you do within it, right? So, being, I hate to use the word realistic, but being honest with yourself about which, you know, time frames you're really able to trade and able to manage. I think is uh, important, more so than trying to pick the quote-unquote best one. The best one is the one that you're going to be most consistent with, and that's true of any of it. I wouldn't even care. All of them offer a, a, a more of an edge than you're going to get without using them. Let's put it that way, period. I can say that without any hesitation. <laughs> so um, it, doesn't even, it doesn't matter which ones you use, whether it's the best one or the better one or whatever, whatever. The most important thing, I've talked about this at, when I'm doing webinars inside of Groundworks, um, the most important thing is to find something that, you, that is comfortable for you. And the reason it has to be comfortable is because the only way you're ever going to do, do this, make any money in this business, is if you get consistent. People that bounce from one method to another, that use one trading methodology for three trades and another one for three trades, and another, they never make it. That those, those people come and go. That's I'm, you know, I'm sorry about their luck, but they're not going to be here tomorrow. So, <clears throat> I'm not really interested in them. I'm, the people that are going to make it, the the people are that are the ones that recognize that they have to do something consistently, whatever it is. It really doesn't matter what it is, but they got to do something. They got to have some sort of methodology, even if all it is is buying every 50% Fibonacci ratio that may or may not even be real and you know running a whatever point stop and a whatever point target even if it's just that simple it, it that's better than method hopping frankly because um, at least it gives them something to be consistent with and if there is a real mathematical edge to be had there if for instance doing whatever uh, buying that 50% FIB ratio and doing whatever uh, risk-reward ratio you needed to do would offer you a 51 or 52 or greater percent edge, which it probably would, uh, then all you need to do to realize that edge is to figure out a way to get yourself to consistently act on it until that edge is realized. It's really simple. It's mind-numbingly simple, in fact, and I think that's what makes trading so 
frustrating for a lot of people is it is really boring when it's when you get successful at it <laughs> because you're not doing you're just doing the same thing over and over again it really is groundhog day so i mean the 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 markets may change the underlying markets may change i mean that you're trading one day to the next or one trade to the next but the the underlying methodology that you're trading should not trade change if it does then how could you ever hope to be consistent um so so anyway back to groundworks this is just a like i said a real time feed of I have it set to the markets that I want and the risk reward ratio that I want and the structure rating that I want. So you're not seeing everything. You're actually only seeing the ones that I want to see. Um, and it does give you a chart and everything. And then the targets would be right here. And of course the stop, your entry point, all of that is kind of very much, very easily and visually spelled out. Structure reading, when it says 90%, does that mean it has a 90% chance of success? No, it just means that 90% of the things that we would want to have in um, a, a, a quote-unquote perfect pattern, even though we know we could never achieve perfection, we're 90% of, of the way there, is what it is really saying. Here's one for the British pound. And you can see many of these are very small. And small by small, I mean, you know, your entry here is 51.35, and the B point's 51.50. Basically, it's only worth 20 point pop. So for me to take a 20 point trade, I couldn't risk more than 10 or 15 points on the trade at most, and even that's a lot. But 10 points of risk in the British pound is not very realistic. So it's not, I, mean, I hate to use that word, but it's not very, uh, think about it, the average spread is three to five. So you're barely two times the, uh, the spread in, uh, with a 10 point stop. So it's not something that I personally would be into, but it doesn't mean it won't work. And it doesn't mean it's, it wouldn't be fine for people that are okay with those very small risks. I prefer, well, something different. And you can see here, here's the commodities, futures. Where am I? We got a bearish pattern in gold here earlier this morning, but it was, again, also short term, only looking for a, about a $10 retracement. Here's some crude oil. Looking for some kind of a dead cat bounce in crude oil. May have already come and gone, actually. That was much earlier. But this is really, like I said, a great filtering mechanism. So at the end of the day, I don't have to sit around and look for all these different trades and all these different patterns. This will just ultimately, ultimately search for me and pull them out um, based on the criteria that I want and then it's simply my job to execute the patterns. I'd love to show you the software, but unfortunately that's on the computer that didn't want to connect. So, and we only have about five minutes left. So hit me with questions, guys. I know, uh, I know this has been short and a little, a little different, <laughs> but um, don't be shy with questions. Like I said, the bottom line is at the end of the day, um, for me, what got me to harmonic trading, and I really don't care. Um, I'll be the first person to admit it's, I'm not married to harmonics in any way, shape, or form because uh, for any other reason than it works. It's not uh, – other than uh, – if, if it stopped working, I would stop using it in five minutes. Um, the interesting thing is that it's been working now f since it was discovered in the 1930s for – you know, what, 80 something years almost. So, uh, you know, I find that pretty interesting that it's not in the, in the face of, you know, quote unquote, uh, massively changing market. Think about it in the thirties, there wasn't even such a thing as computers. And now the entire market's dominated by high frequency trading. And yet these patterns are still here, still working no matter what, 
you know the under the underlying thing really hasn't changed at all um and then when we historically go back and look at you know through back testing of course which is only so valuable but at least it does give you some historical perspective we see that hey these patterns have existed going back not just to the 30s but even when we look back in you know old stock market data prior to that and in, going into the 1800s and even further back in markets where we can get the data do I still use Ivar? Ivar is basically like the Hearst exponent, right? Which is sort of like a cheesed up version of uh, fractal dimension. Um, it's really just a way of, per, uh, of measuring persistence or anti-persistence. Um, yes, I do still use it um, as a kind of secondary filter. The, uh, yeah, absolutely. I find it a very interesting mathematical tool, the Hearst or Ivar, whatever, because it's literally telling you, you know, the feedback loop of how is the feedback loop feeding upon itself? Is it positively feeding itself or negatively feeding itself? And that I find interesting and useful. Any link to download and read? Um, yes, there is a, sorry, I meant to give you guys a um, promo code. If you go to fxgroundworks.com, I'll type it in right now. Um, thanks. Um, and use the promo, promo code, just FX Street. You will get a uh, very sizable discount on signing up. And the uh, I got a log out to be able to show you, but yes, there's a uh, you can sign up for the, the Harmonic Magazine, which is free. Um, I don't know why here it is. Log out. Right here, download our free magazine. So there's a lot of actually free information on this site, believe it or not. Um, how was my harmonics trading last year? Uh, very, I mean, very good. Uh, the best I can show you is, all right, well, I don't have time, but um, next time we can show, I, I'll show it, but... Um, I had a couple of accounts that just got started at the end of the year, actually, and ended up, um, well, banging out a pretty good return, considering they only started within a few weeks at the end of the year. And uh, other ones, too, obviously, from earlier in the year as well. The key is that most, more, more important than anything, Chuck, is it was consistent. <laughs> um, good or bad it's consistent I mean if it was consistently bad obviously I wouldn't do it in perpetuity so I think that's pretty self-explanatory but um, more important than anything else like I said is it's consistent I don't have to get up every day and try and figure some new idea out or some new system or learn or anything all I gotta do is do the same thing yesterday and the same thing I did the day before that and before that if I just keep doing that over and over again, I get where I'm trying to go. So, call me lazy, but it's nice. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to wrap it up. Thank you, FX Street, for hosting this. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties there. I don't know why that computer wouldn't do it, um, but we'll definitely get it sorted for next time here. And, uh, I uh, look forward to seeing you all again. We're hopefully going to be doing these each month on the Monday after NFP. My hope was to really go through the live charts, but like I said, since that other computer didn't want to play nice, um, couldn't quite do that. But next time we will go through live charts and actually see if we can find some uh, live trades.
So uh, anyway, thank you, everyone, and uh, look forward to seeing you back here next month. And thank you again, FX Street.